Hello and welcome to this CIHT webinar, which is for anyone who is preparing their portfolio of evidence for CENG, IENG or ENG Tech professional review using the CIHT online application portal. The purpose of this session is to tell you about some of the key things to consider and how to avoid potential technical issues when submitting your application. So if you are interested in applying for professional review through CIHT, your application must be submitted via our online application portal. This can be accessed via the CNG, ING and ENG Tech pages of our websites, but please be aware that there is a different online form for each level, so please make sure you're using the correct one before you start. One of the great benefits of the online system is that you can save your progress as you go, so it doesn't need to be completed in one session, and you can go back into it at any time. Once you have made a start in your application, you can easily return to this through your MyCIHT account. So you can simply click MyCIHT in the top right hand corner of the screen once you're logged in, and there will be an option to return to your application. When you open the application portal for the very first time, you will only have access to the first section, which has the title Underpinning Knowledge. So at this stage, all of the other sections will be greyed out and inaccessible until this first section has been completed. So to unlock the full online form, you must upload evidence of your initial assessment outcome email, which confirms that you are eligible to apply for professional review, or your outcome letter, which confirms that you have successfully completed the technical report or further learning report stage of the process. Now, either way, this document needs to be uploaded as an A4 portrait Word or PDF document. Therefore, if you are uploading your initial assessment outcome email, please do convert it to a PDF file before uploading it to the system. Now, the system might let you upload an Outlook file for this section and allow you to proceed to the rest of the form, but you will encounter a technical issue later on when you're trying to submit your application through the system. Now, this session isn't planned uh, to run through each individual section of the online form, as many sections are relatively straightforward to complete with helpful instructions provided on each page. However, I would just like to draw your attention to some important points which you sh should consider as you work your way through the online form. Firstly, there are a small number of special characters which the system will not accept anywhere within the online form. And these are the characters highlighted in red on your screen. And when I say they will not be accepted anywhere, this also includes the titles of your file names that you upload to the system. So they cannot appear anywhere throughout your application. The system might not alert you to the fact that one of these characters is present. So please do take the time to review your application carefully before submitting. As per the last slide, it's essential that you seek to ensure all of your uploaded documents are A4 portrait Word or PDF documents. The system will not accept any other document type. And I'll provide an example of why it's so important that you do upload in this format in the next slide. You should also be aware that the system does not have an embedded spell check feature. So again, please review the content of your portfolio carefully for any spelling and grammatical errors. Your two allocated reviewers will not know you and your portfolio is going to be the very first impression they have of you. And it's therefore extremely important that your application is presented in a professional manner. Finally, if you are copying and pasting from a Word document, Please note that this will only include special values and you will need to reformat this using the features provided on the portal. Just to give you an example, if your Word document has a bullet point list, the bullet points will not be copied across when pasting to the online form. You will need to use the bullet point function on the form to add these in again. So just to once again stress the importance of your documents being uploaded in A4 portrait, Word or PDF format. The reason for this is because once all sections have been completed, the system will generate a preview copy of your application. If you have uploaded a landscape document, 
list will not be fully visible in the final copy. As you can see from this screenshot of a CPD record, the text on the right hand side in the reflect column has been cut off as it's been uploaded to the system as a landscape document. You should therefore seek to rotate any A4 landscape documents so that they comply with the system requirements. If you rotate the CPD record on its side, this will ensure that all of the text is visible in A4 portrait mode. Now, don't worry, the reviewers will be able to rotate this page in the final PDF copy that they receive. Um, so you don't need to worry about them having to read this section with their head turned sideways. But for the purposes of submitting your application, you must ensure that all uploaded documents are presented in a way in which they can be clearly seen in your preview document. Moving on now to talk a little about word count and spacing. The online portal has a built in word count feature, which is a helpful tool as many sections have word limits applied to them. For instance, you will have a maximum of 500 words for each of the UK spec evidence forms. As you can see from the screenshot in the current slide, this user has inputted 500 words exactly, and they've clicked enter once when starting a new paragraph. And this is the recommended approach. But paragraph spacing is very important um, because if you were to click enter twice before starting a new paragraph, please be aware that this blank row actually counts as one word in the background of the system, but isn't actually reflected in the word count which you can see on the screen. So from the screenshot, from the screenshot, the word count is indicating that the candidate has used 500 words. But this would in fact be 502 words due to the double line spacing which has been applied. This is likely to cause you some confusion if the section is not saving due to the number of words, but this is very often the cause of the issue. So if you have used 500 words and you've applied single line paragraph, paragraph spacing, please also ensure that there is no space below your very final sentence or paragraph, as again, this would count as one word and it's not always obvious to spot. If you are uploading A4 portrait documents in Word or PDF, this screenshot here is a good example of how to present these in a format which complies with the system requirements. Firstly, please ensure that your appendices are uploaded in ascending order. Secondly, and very importantly, Please ensure that they are signposted within the text with clear corresponding file names and you will have a maximum of three uploads per competence. If you have non A4 appendices, which simply would be too difficult to display clearly as an A4 portrait document, our recommended approach is including a maximum of one URL within each UK spec evidence form. It may also be tempting to include a URL within your A4 uploaded document, for instance, with an instruction to tell the reviewers to click here for a clearer image. However, please note that URLs should not be included in any of your uploaded A4 documents, as the reader will not be able to click on these in the final copy. Instead, any URLs must only be included within your UK spec evidence forms directly. If you do include a URL within your UK spec evidence form, this should link directly to a Word or PDF file and not a folder of documents. Another important point to note is that the file included as part of your URL must be readily available to anyone with access, i.e. they're not required to sign in to any sharing platform in order to view the file. And this needs to be set up by yourself to ensure that a reviewer can open the file at a quick single click of a button. So as just shown, try and avoid including multiple URLs within your UK spec evidence forms. Try and make the reviewer's experience of reading your portfolio as straightforward as possible without having to open up numerous different files. Now, as a reminder, your appendices across all competencies must not exceed 50 pages in total. So you will need to add up the number of pages used if you have included a URL, in addition to uploading any A4 documents through the system itself, 
and combined these must not exceed 50 pages in total. Once you have completed all sections of your application, you can preview a copy to ensure that all of your documentation is appearing correctly and as you want it to. If you are struggling to read anything at this stage, please note that your reviewers are going to have the same problem when they receive your application. So if you do notice that you need to make a couple of changes to your application at this stage, that's absolutely fine. And you will simply need to edit the relevant section of the online portal as opposed to trying to edit the preview document itself. Now, it's important to stress that you can preview your application as many times as you wish before you proceed to submit him. So this is a really important step of the process to make sure that you're happy with the final draft of your application. Now, something which does form part of your application are your sponsor forms. Uh, your sponsors will be asked to complete a sponsor form and send this to the education team. Uh, they should only really be doing this once they've reviewed a copy of your final draft and confirmed that they're happy with the content and appearance of your portfolio. So once you've checked and you've rechecked the preview of your application and you're happy with everything, you can then proceed to submitting your portfolio. Now by clicking submit on the final screen, you will then be taken to the payment stage to complete your application. If you don't see a submit button on the final screen here, don't panic. This just means that we need to update our internal system to confirm that you're eligible to make an application for professional review. So it's not a technical fault or anything like that. It's just um, a small administrative process that needs to take place in order to make that submit button live for you. Thank you for watching this short video, which I hope you found helpful. If you do have any questions as you go through the online application portal, please feel free to get in touch with the education team at education at crht.org.uk. Thank you.